Awesome. Hello, hello. Welcome back to our construction estimate series. I am Danielle Plisky Brown, investor agent and investor. Uh, and I am here with my co host and dear friend, Raj Tamang of Green Valley Custom Home Builders. And we're here today to continue our construction estimate series. And we are talking about exterior features and how to compare uh, costs, um, install methods, and how to estimate them while you're on site for either a new construction build or a flip. So let's start with roofing. Like that's, that is uh, usually one of those big ticket items that most people are like, do I need, like, what is this going to cost me? What kind of roof should I do? What kind of products are there? What's the difference in price of those products? Um, so let's talk about some of the most common roofs that we're, that we're using right now in your builds. And then we've talked about it a little bit before in other episodes, um, but let's talk about, I guess, specifically, how would you estimate for a house? Like, I know you talk a lot about houses in McLean. So how would you go about on a new construction build starting to estimate the cost of a roof? Yeah, um, like you mentioned, we talk about this roofing, but now we're, uh, we're talking more about from cost um, estimation pur uh, the purpose. Um, when you say roofing, there are different type of roofing, right? It could be, you know, singles, it could be uh, metal, it could be tiles, um, a flat roof. Now, now you see a lot of modern homes, you have a flat room. I have two homes I'm coming to, they are completely flat. I have never done it before. I have not built it. I have designed several, huh. but I have not built it. So I'm very interested um, in how it's gonna come out. So it's gonna uh, be completely like a flat very modern, design? modern. Say again? Is it, like, is it very modern, contemporary kind of design, like sleek? You know what I mean? Not not very typical colonial style or even craftsman style, which is pretty mm -hmm. common in Virginia. Are you talking more of like, like a new version of a mid-century modern house? Like, is it one like that? Yeah, it's not going completely modern, modern. So almost like transitions, right? From nowadays from farmhouses going to Perry style Perry to going to modern. Um, so the, some of the things you will see is you don't see a lot of, you don't see ports, um, in, especially at the front, you don't see ports, right? It's more like a flat, straight panel wall. Um, and you have a lot of windows um, instead of siding probably and in stone and brick, you'll see stucco, right? Mm. Because stucco will give you a very clean look, um, looking very modern cement finish. Um, it's a little bit expensive, but again, um, because that's the demand is with all these new generations, um, they always looking for something new, you know? I don't know if they yeah. like it or not, but it's just something so they want to have something that not a lot of people have it. Um, so it's it's a big demand with a new a new constructions now. So I have a few projects and I have a few projects I'm designing for a client where they want to do completely modern. So especially for my house, uh, two spec homes I, I just started, I'm thinking even the inside, you have to be careful because outside you have a flat roof and a lot of doors and windows, but then you inside also you have to think you can't just have a traditional cabinet and floorings and stairs. So now I'm thinking maybe all this cabinet, you may have to do a flat panel, right? European style flat panel. Mm, like um, Italian lacquer, things yeah. that maybe have some shine to it. Not You're not looking at like a shaker cabinet or yes. something no. that feels a little more farmhouse or traditional or is very ornate. Yes, and, and some of the things you can do, that's, Cabinets is definitely vanities and cabinet with the modern. The difference is they are flat panel. It looks like office. Not everybody likes it. I'm telling you, I don't like it. It's too plain. It looks like office, yeah. you know, plain flat panel. Um, but then some of these stairs, you can have a glass rail, floating stairs. That's very common. Mm -hmm. um, you know, depending on the budget, I'm doing glass rails now. But if it is more than three point five or four million dollar, I'm going a little bit more fancy with floating stairs, all that because that has to be part of it. I think yeah. the concept wise with a modern design is more openness, right? You have to have a lot of doors and windows. That's it, you know, that's what I see, you know? So yeah. then you have light from outside coming from outside to inside. Um, then we talk about this one before the integration of outside space to the inside. That's very important and especially modern home design. Mm -hmm. Everything is open flow. Right, and, and so you you don't see too many, especially in main level, I design 
we designed and built two houses two years ago. It's a completely modern home. Um, I really didn't like it. It was a spec home for builder, so I didn't care. We we designed and built it for him. I think he make money. But in the first floor, this is like almost 8,000 square feet home, first floor and second floor. On the first floor, when you open the door, you don't see yeah. nothing, no walls. It's all open, it's um, starting from your kitchen, living, dining, everything's all open. Wow. I thought that's too open. I didn't like it, but there are people like it. You know, he sold it immediately. Huh. There were two, home, two homes who actually built it. Wow. Okay. That's pretty um, interesting. A lot of trends are coming, but you know, it's just, it's just unique. You know, people are always learning. I'm always learning. I love, but for me, like I say, as an investor, as spec home builders, the best bet is do what everybody is doing, which is uh, farmhouse and petty style. But for me, I want to be, I want to do something a little bit different challenge, you know, maybe it's a little bit, yeah. not everybody like it, but I don't want to just, I have a few homes. I just built it. What I know pretty much everybody will like, but I want to do something challenging also like trial basis. Yeah. What I know not, that not everybody will like it, but people who like it, they will like it. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And some people are looking for something different. That's not yeah. craftsman. That's not farmhouse. That's maybe more of a transitional style, slightly modern or more modern version of those things. Some people just like something that feels more unique, just yeah. unique. I've had a lot of clients that say, I really do not want a box, like a cookie cutter box that everybody has. They yeah. like, it would be really weird. Like we're really into that. I'm like, all right, let's go. <laughs> it's, but it's, it's very interesting. Okay, so tell me more back to the roof, like the flat roof. What is the benefit of a flat roof compared to a sloped roof? You know, I don't think there is a, I mean, I don't think there is a direct benefit in terms of a cost. It's just the design because a modern home flat roof, you have to have a flat. If you have a, you know, farmhouse, typical house, you have a slope roof, right? Um, and there's also a transition from farmhouse to really steep slope. I don't know what you call it. I forgot. But I've seen yeah. some houses, the slope is even more steeper, you know, almost like farmhouse. Like, like an A-frame, like, frame, like an yeah, A-frame yeah. house, like a wooded, in like a wooden area. Yeah, that looks like it. But now, you know, if you look at this in McLean Falls area, the slope is really steep, like, yeah, I'm really pointy, you know what I'm saying? Huh. Like a so, gable. Like a I don't know what do you call it. I can find out huh. because um I I have a couple of homes I'm I'm working on that design, but it just that it's just very the roof slope is really slope, you know? Mm -hmm. Almost like a log house, you know, type of like you say in a wooded area where you see really slope is really steep slope. But mm -hmm. like I say, these are all transitions because people are I guess you know, sick and tired of seeing the similar type of home, cookie, cookie cutter home. So they want to have something different. So all that and single roof is very cost effective. I mean, overall co cost um, comparison in my mind, slope roof and singles are the best. Um, mm -hmm. So the, when you say flat roof, um, usually on the floor system, roof system would be still trusses or you can do eye joist, um, but I do trusses. Um, but it's going to be flat trusses instead of triangle, it's going to be flat trusses. Huh. And okay. I, because I still have to run the ductwork in between the trusses or perpendicular direction to the trusses because I have to run the ductwork right for the floor, top floor. Um, but then on the, then mostly the, the finishing or insulations or not just insulation, you can do insulations, but you have to achieve that slope. Mm -hmm. Because you have to remember when you say flat, it's not perfect. You can't have a perfectly flat. It means perfectly flat means when you rain, the water is standing still. So there's yeah. no such a thing as a flat roof, but there's a minimum slope. But when you think about it, if it is like 50 feet, 60 feet long house, and you have to achieve that slope, at the mid, you still, you may have to go almost like 12 inches or 8 to 12 inches high to get that oh, slope wow. at the end, you know? Yeah, and typically so we things. get that slope <laughs> with the insulations or, um, you know, so you can do some kind of insulation material with it so that you have insulations and all the waterproofing 
to achieve that slope and you use like EPDM material um, for the waterproofing. So I think cost is almost the same now. Um, I mean, it feels like a EPDM, it's cheaper, definitely easy to installation, but cost wise almost the same now. So I would say, I mean, I, I don't know, it's really cost saving, but almost the same in my mind, the slope roof or the flat roof, it's just the construction and design is different, you know? God. And also, okay. also st with the standing seam metal, you probably will see it in farmhouse where it, not everywhere, but mostly at the porches, ports, right? Um, yeah, oh, yeah, over porches windows. or or doorways. Like right. front doors. Yeah, on the front porch or sometime on the side, you have a box window, or bay window. Those areas you'll see metal roofs uh, from design perspective. And also, you have to remember when you have a single roof, the minimum slope rec recommended is uh, 3 by 12. So you have to have a minimum of 3 12 for singles. But if your slo roof slope is less than that, let's say 1 12 or 2 by 12, the single is not good because water may penetrate through, right? So then you have to go with metal oh. roof. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Uh, the cost wise, yeah, maybe, yeah, definitely. Um, metal roof is a little bit more expensive, but not, not that crazy. But it's not just that, that people don't use, I've not seen people using that metal roof the entire house. Um, you don't see that that often, I, I've seen it. I, I don't know if you, I mean, you can probably design it, but I don't know how it's gonna look. I haven't seen a fully metal roof on like a house. I've, I've seen, seen it on a guest but... house. I've seen it on like a, an ADU unit, I, I just don't really see it on like the full house, yeah. the full main house of, um, of a property. Yeah. So like you say, I mean, you can do you know, tiles and sometimes your roof, you don't see in residential construction that much, but mm -hmm. in in many areas in the roof, uh, part of the roof you can use as a terrace or balcony. Yeah, I was going to you know? ask about that. So like the coolest part that I would think about about having a flat roof is that you could have a roof deck because like you're mm -hmm. not going to have a roof deck on like a slope roof. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing. That's an advantage. So you have to design it because you only have a, you know, terrace or balcony. Um, you have to provide railings. So, you know, the architecturally you have to think about how it's going to look because all of a sudden you have a railings on the top of the roof. Uh, because that's required if you want to use that space. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, I have this house, I, I mentioned to you, I'm working on designing it in Arlington. So so I'm going four story building, including basement. Basement, first floor, second floor, and mm -hmm. the third floor. But third floor, what I'm doing, instead of using the entire area, I'm going only half. Mm. So half of the area could be open terrace, you know? Yeah, so in the front you see the top of a house, the third story, but in yeah. the back it's a great it's a roof deck that's kind of hidden, it's also private. Or vice versa, exactly. You can actually do a uh, floor on the back, front is almost like you can tear us and put nice handrail, you know, glass rails. This this glass mm -hmm. is very common, depending on the where this house, my you know, partner or client I'm doing for my partner, so he plans to sell for more than 2.93 million. Mm -hmm. So he has a lot of budget for it because he he paid like less than $900,000 for the lot. Wow. You know, in Arlington, you and they you can't really build a big house like McLean anyway, right? No. So no. whatever you it, do, I mean, you won't be spending work. that much of money in construction. So, and at the end, he still have a lot of money left over. So if you can sell the house for 2.93, it's just the Arlington, mm -hmm. like I said before, it's a time consuming, it takes time. Uh, some of the, even the process could be painful, but again, now I can understand why some of the builders who are in Arlington li like Arlington is because it looks like there's a profit margin is, is very healthy. Yeah, oh, for sure, absolutely. So from the roof, then the next thing that you would really pick or we should focus on is like siding or what you're putting mm -hmm. on the outside of the house. Like you'd mentioned stucco being really popular now. Like that's something that a lot of people are doing. Uh, and on the flipping end of things, it's actually kind of easy to use certain products to stucco over 
uh, brick or even stone. Like I'm seeing people, mm -hmm. instead of like ripping things out, they're resurfacing stuff in really cool ways and making it look like stucco. Um, I actually learned about a new product today on uh, TikTok of all places. I think it was called Feather, Feather something. And like you could use it as a product to resurface brick or they actually did it on um, travertine tile and they resurfaced oh. it and it looked just like a stucco fireplace. And I was like, wow, that's, I mean, I didn't see it up close or I didn't touch it, but I was pretty impressed with how it looked when it came out. Um, mm -hmm. So let's talk about uh, estimating things on the outside of the house. So siding, you, you've got like three main um, types, right? You've got vinyl siding, which super popular in the 80s, 90s, maybe even two, early 2000s. Um, hardy plank, which I think has really been very popular for the last maybe decade, maybe a little less, but it's been very, mm -hmm. very popular. Um, Especially and luxury plank. homes, you know, like luxury yeah. homes, definitely use a hardy board, not siding not vinyl um mm -hmm. i mean now um i i have a one client she she wants to build a house in mclean so i'm i'm working the design but this would be maybe like three four car garage maybe nine ten thousand square feet house very good size house she has one acre yeah. lot um and the thing is she wants to live there for a few years maybe five ten years in a cell so she has mm -hmm. very specific tests. One of the things she likes is she likes brick, all okay. four sides. And I told her, okay, that's good. But nowadays in modern construction, you don't see that much, that many, um, you know, houses with brick that not looks like not a lot of people like brick, you know? Um, yeah. So what I have seen, but this is the trick, what you can do, which I have seen it now. So you have a brick. So instead of traditional red brick, you paint mm -hmm. it white, off white. Oh yeah, or gray, it look or navy. It, it, kinda, it give you a texture, you know. It's almost give you a texture of of a stucco with a brick pattern, you know. Yes, so, very much so. I've seen that a lot in my neighborhood. A lot of people where their homes had been built in the 50s, 60s, 70s, you know, those kind of times. Um, a lot of them have brick facades. And they're mm -hmm. painting them, and they really look pretty fantastic. And I'm seeing a lot of like bright white, bright white with like a dark roof, and yeah. sometimes either dark gutters or light gutters, depending on what they did. Um, charcoal gray, like a dark gray. It's like almost uh -huh. very masculine looking, um, but like that's become kind of popular. And then also like navy blue, <laughs> like a dark navy blue or maybe a lighter gray. Those are kind of like the four main colors that I've been seeing. But so many people have painted their brick bright white, and it looks fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Like, say, somebody who really like brick, there's different options now. You don't have to stick with a, you know, black or red brick because you yeah. nowadays it's more like with the modern construction, almost the black and white. You know, yeah. and transition oh, gray. Sure. You don't go too much of brown or a blue is a red. Um, so there's different way of achieving. And I see some of the builders in McLean that are doing it. Um, I, I saw one builder, they have a very similar plan, like three, four of them they are building. I really mm -hmm. like the floor plan in the website. I actually, I'm, I'm, I'm not supposed to say it or not, but I'm <laughs> copying it now. So I'm gonna copy it and modify it to make mm -hmm. it look like mine, but which everybody does anyway. It's out there. Everybody does anyway. Your plans on the website. You, you expect people to copy it, you know. So, <laughs> There's only so many but, ways you can lay a house out well and have all the features, finishes, and the similar amenities that the buyers are looking for. Like, there's only so many ways to do that. So it, it, yeah. it's not really copying. It's just more of everyone getting on the same page about what everyone else is looking for. Exactly. Now, these builders, before it used to be, oh, this is my model home, that's my model home. Now, pretty much some of the builders, they have the same, you know, it, it's like, like I said, for me personally, I really don't care because I, I truly believe there's enough for everybody, okay? You don't have to be yeah. worried about competition, you know? If you're good, you you believe in yourself, that you do quality work, um, you, I don't think you have to worry about the job um, opportunity. There's plenty. I mean, we, I now, real estate market is a different scenario now. Construction as a contractors and builders, we have so much, we have so much pressure to build more homes, but even if I'm getting called every day, like pretty much every day, and I say, most of the time I say no. 
um, I can't do it because I don't want to really stress myself to do more. If we can provide the quality and what I believe in, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, no, absolutely. That, and it's very honest that you do. Yeah. Um, Cause these are kind of, con these are the conversations that we're even discussing now, this, the design, that is a conversation that just seemingly never ends during the process, <laughs> but you have to yes. try to do as much upfront because it helps you with budgeting. And it also helps you with layout concept and all of these things. So like having an idea of what kind of roof you're looking at, what kind of siding you'd be interested in, um, even water tables, are you going to have one at all? Are you going to have it match? Is it going to be like a stucco finish? Are you going to have stone? Do you want brick? Is it going to be a different color than the rest of the house? How high is it going to go? Like mm -hmm. all of those are conversations that, um, that really are important to have as far up front as you possibly can, especially with your uh, clients. And then that way you can figure out how can you help them design the house of their dreams by having an idea of what they're looking for. I mean, if you, yeah. So oh, Raj, I great... think we lost your video. You lost my video? Do you hear me? Yeah, I can't see you. Oh, there we go. You're back. Okay. Because now I can, I can actually clearly see, um, hear you better than before. Um, what oh, I was just saying is if you um, make me admi admin, I can actually share some of the house, the models I have rendering, some of the model homes I was talking about. Sure. Um, it, it, so you'll see, I mean, the rest is we'll talk about brick or stone thin or at, now that you can have a thin stone of different textures. Um, yeah, of course, windows and doors, there are different types of doors and windows, uh, vinyl is the most economical, then you go with the cladding, uh, you know, black or white windows, right? It depends. Usually when I have black, I don't like a vinyl, we go with cladding. So you have wood and outside cladding, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, even sometimes you can even have a, what do you call it? The fiber, uh, fiberglass? No. <sighs> what do you call it? There's, it's not wood like doors, like front doors, not a, all the doors are wood. It's, it's uh, um, you know, I think fiberglass, I, I don't know. It's not wood, it's not vinyl, okay? So there are different okay. products available, but like I said, um, and also how much you wanna pay with the vinyl, even you might have a lowest grade versus, uh, same window package for a house, I tell uh, homeowners when I talk to them, it could be 20 grand, it could be easily 100 grand. Okay, it depends. So yeah. those are the things, to be honest with you, um, the conversation you have to have with your contractor or builder is that you can't say, hey, this house window is $20,000. Um, and I can give you windows in $20,000, but then windows could be tiny, smaller when you may not like it, right? So yeah. you have to understand what you're getting with the price um, because I have a you know experience with one of the homeowners, they, they signed a contract to build a house with, with this builder. Um, and they, there was some of the information was not correct because, you know, homeowner, you have to understand this is the first time they are building. They don't know. You have to educate them. Yeah. So they put a like, they have like 15,000 square feet home and the builder put like $20,000 allowance for the window. And that's not even close for one story. One oh. story. I'm telling you, okay. <laughs> And this is like a large yeah. man. This is like three, four million dollar homes. How can you put a twenty thousand yeah. dollar for windows? Okay, and when he actually no, got a, get make a quote, sense. yeah, when he actually got a, got a quote from the vendor, it was one hundred fifty thousand dollars. And the builder said, "Okay, oh. quote is one hundred fifty thousand dollar. My allowance is twenty thousand dollar. Pay hundred thousand. What is one hundred thirty thousand dollar different? Who? That's that's the city way of doing business. I'm telling. You. I don't like Man, the people. You know, awful. I have to say, people sometimes do that business. So, but <laughs> what I tell them is, okay, guys, this is a twenty thousand dollar. You want twenty thousand dollar? This is what you're getting. But you have to have that conversation at the beginning, not after, yeah. not after you sign the contract. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, after 100%. you have signed the contract, it's too late. And woman, they don't have hundred fifty. Not everybody has one hundred fifty thousand dollar. Minus twenty thousand dollar, which is one hundred thirty thousand dollar difference of savings sitting on the back of nothing, you know. <laughs> that's not like a little bit off. That's like that's a lot. Six times wrong. Like it, that's and crazy. same builder. He put a thirty thousand for a cabinets and a countertop. I said, now this thirty thousand dollars is not even townhouse. 
The problem Barely. is, you know, yeah. this homeowner was so probably happy. This such a name reputed builder. Um, maybe they were they are able to build this house for the lower price, but they didn't really didn't know what they're getting with the price, you know? Yeah. Um, then you know, they spent so many months and now they have to get out of the contract, find another builder to finish the house. The problem is that the time is all wasting, you know? Well, and a lot of money. Even getting out of the contract, that's still a lot of money that you're wasting. I, um, I have a client wow. where they did not know. Now, um, because I did, I was the design, I did a design for this builder. And uh, now when they actually did the calculations, it came at 250,000, no, actually $300,000 more than their budget. Mm -hmm. And uh, this client, they are doctors, right? So he's, he said, I have not slept for a week because where do I get that $250,000 now to finish the house? They didn't, they signed a contract, got the money. Um, now, when they actually start putting together a bid for those doors and windows, all the features in the house, it's like two hundred fifty to 300000 or more than their budget. Wow. Um, then they have to sign off. They have to, uh, you know, make the contract null and void and then now they can't build a house because they have to wait for a few years so two hundred fifty thousand dollars where they're gonna for a regular employee you know saving that that's a lot of money and they said yeah. i don't think i can be actually build for a house for another two three years because i need to save that kind of money because now i know how much it's gonna take to build a house well and that's assuming the price of any of that stuff doesn't go up yes. in those two or three years the which as we've seen in the yeah. last two years, probably will, at least a little bit. So, it's, yeah, that's a very difficult thing. Um, and it's really important to have these conversations up okay. front because they really do affect the cost and the price of the home. Oh, Rush, we uh, we lost your video again. So it looks oh, like back. when I change... No, what I'm saying, when I change this, um, go to another page, mm -hmm. all of a sudden it looks like but this is my iPad, but the, I, I'm not covering the camera. But when I switch to another, let's say another page. Yeah. Then probably you lost me, right? Yep, I did. So I don't know. So I wanted to share that page. I want to show the house I'm doing it so that they can see what I'm talking about. And also it's you not completely modern, but. To. You should be able to share. Say camera mic. Uh, here. Um, there's a da -da -da, mic. There is no option, Daniel. At the bottom, there should be a little um navigation bar, and there's a little TV screen. Yeah, it's right a mic. The TV screen with I only have a five, so maybe that's not there. I don't have that. One is a mic, and other is camera. And settings and chat mm -hmm. and then and leave. That's it. I don't have that. Hmm. And I don't know. Hold on one second. So we've done this before in other episodes. So I would hope that we, we can figure right? this yeah. out. We have. We absolutely have. Um, hmm. Let's see. I don't know. I cannot figure it out. I am sorry, Raj. That's okay. Let's, yeah, we can do it next time. Okay. Chat. Yeah. Well, or next time, send them oh, to me, and I can I could always put them up. So I think the only okay. thing that we wanted to tackle today, the only last thing that we haven't discussed really, is estimating on doors. So the difference in like door type, uh, door package type, um, because we're specifically talking about exterior doors. You have everything from like sliding doors, front doors. You have very tall doors, doors that double doors, like French doors. Um, are there any tips and tricks that you use when trying to estimate for door packages for different types of properties? Um, 
I do. Um, let's say if you, you have to remember, if you have 10 foot ceiling, um, usually yeah. in these days, 10 foot on a main level, um, you, we go eight foot doors. The standard door mm -hmm. is six, eight, right? 80 inch, that's a standard door height. Yep. Um, but with, if you have a 10 foot ceiling, if you do six, eight, uh, it really doesn't look nice. I'm telling you, you have too much space above the door, um, right? And then yeah. if you have 10 foot, so we do at least eight foot doors. If the doors, especially exterior doors, we're talking about exterior doors. I mean, they're most popular is Therma True, right? That's that's very popular brand. I we use it. We use the Pella, um, especially if the black. I use all the Pella products for doors and mm -hmm. windows. Um, but one of the things you want to keep in mind is that try to use a standard size. Sometimes like oh, one inch good. or two inch makes a difference. So what I do it now. I mean, I've been doing for many years now. I know what the standard size, what is not. If you don't know, you can talk to the vendor directly. Say, hey, this is what I'm trying mm. to do. Can you help me out? That's what I did um, at the beginning when I started preparing these doors and windows. So especially spec home, and you have uh, you know fifty, sixty thousand dollar door windows only. So that makes a huge difference um, in the overall cost. So you talk to them and try to see if you can use some standard. So instead of going non-standard, maybe you can play with a couple of inches. Uh, without affecting the uh, you know, aesthetics of the house, um, and but your cost could be significantly less, right? Going to standard. Which can summer. add up. That can yeah. really add up over the to the length of a project for sure. It so does. How can we incorporate standard sizes while well, it still looks good and substantial and proportionate to what yeah. we're building? And for some sure. of the things I've seen, like patio doors um, and folding doors. So nowadays with the open concept a lot of doors and windows so on the patio instead of you can have like 12 feet 16 feet or 20 feet big doors mm -hmm. okay oh, yeah. so kind of collapse like an accordion yeah you can be flat those are a little bit expensive now the the pretty standard is you can do 12 feet and you have a four panel three feet three feet three feet three feet so the the, the in four panel in panels could be fixed the other two could be sliding you know what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah. Same mm -hmm. thing. Some of the big windows, we have eight foot, nine foot windows. Some of the things you can do in such a way, instead of making one big, you can make a panel even like two feet on the bottom and 10 foot, eight foot on the top, uh, six foot on top. So one mm -hmm. of the trick I can, I can tell you, if you have a windows um, seal less than 18 inches from the floor, the glass has to be tempered, right? Yeah. That That's right. So, but, when you have a temple glass, it's expensive. It, it adds up. It's it's yeah. It's gonna be. It could be depending on the size. It could be five hundred to thousand dollar, even more per window. So what I do is that when I have an eight foot window, because this all modern homes is nowadays, especially at the front and back, it's eight foot windows. So what I do is that out of eight foot, I make a panel of two feet at the bottom and six foot on the top. Hmm. Oh no, <laughs> now you froze, Raj. Looks like we're back. I don't know what oh, happened. You're, from yeah, me. you're back. I'm back, right? You're so back. what I was you're... saying is, what I was saying, if you have a big eight foot window, so mm -hmm. tricky is because eight foot window, so you have to think about when you have an eight foot window because the door is also eight foot and the window is eight foot. So usually the trick is that top of the doors and header, you want to make it the same level as So yeah, you know saying? That's the, how the typical are done. So header is the same level. So that means eight foot window, your window seal is actually sitting on the floor. Hmm. It means the glass has yeah. to be tempered. And if it's a big like that eight foot windows, all the glasses temper could be a lot expensive. So what I do is I make a panel of two feet on the bottom and six feet on the top. Mm. So two so feet just bottom the smaller window temper. is the tempered glass. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really make a difference because it's one piece, but with a with a with a frame in between, but mule together frame. So the bottom one is um, 
is the tempered and top one is not tempered because it doesn't have to be. Hmm. And same yeah, way. And that's a very smart move. Yeah, and, and like I said, and you don't have to make a casement window uh, because double hung, when you have a double hung, you, they, they, then you, re if you really want to see a big openness with a window, it's a fixed windows or you have to be casement window. Because casement windows or fixed windows, looking from outside, you saw, don't see the difference, right? It just, you know, it's the same, no, right? From outside. It it's just that <laughs> casement windows you can open, but the casement versus fixed, the price is a big difference. Oh, for sure. So, huge difference. Huge, so huge difference. Unless I need it, this big window, I don't make it casement windows. I make oh. all these fixed windows. And in the bedrooms, you need at least on the second floor, and floor above, you need the egress window. So I add another smaller window next to it and other side of the room, make an egress and make all these big windows fixed windows. Hmm. Got it. Okay. So as long as you have the egress, then you can change the other window types. Yeah. Doesn't matter. You just need the one egress window in a bedroom. Got it. Yeah. Very smart. Yeah. Those are the things you can do. And these are the things I'm actually learning from from our vendor, I'm I'm constantly talking with them. They have new product coming in. It's just that we have to build a relation with, with your vendor, right? And yeah. make sure that, you know, you you are stay connected with them. And, and like I like say, with new technology, a lot of things are evolving. And, you know, so every time I have a new, new project, I talk to them, hey, I have a new project coming in. I'm trying to use the same product. Do you have anything coming up or do you recommend anything? It doesn't take a whole lot of time. You just communicate. Sometimes yeah. they will ask, we have a new product. You should do this one. This is great. Um, sometimes they want to sell a new product. That's okay. But, you know, sometimes is there genuinely time to help you too. Um, yeah. And then start, see if you can save money. So you are getting very compatible product and you'll save money. Uh, in especially a big house like that, and you have sixty, seventy thousand dollar windows only, you can save ten thousand dollars. And especially for me, we if I can save ten thousand dollars just for a window, one house, I'm building ten house. That's hundred grand. Yeah, it's a lot of money. Yeah. Well, and you also have familiarity with a product that likely will be used a lot more, right? New products come out, and often they catch on. And if you're one of the first people to actually know how to use it and leverage it, mm -hmm. it really could be to your advantage as a business person. Sounds good. Yeah, I agree. Oh, <laughs> okay. Awesome. Well, I think we were able to tackle our entire list today, which was pretty extensive. And believe it or not, we actually had to cut it down in half. But next week, we're going to go over all the interior features um, and start discussing how to in, uh, estimate those. So things like flooring, interior doors, uh, cabinetry, things like that. So next week, we're going to be going and uh, discussing that. If you have any questions, please do leave it in the comments and we'll make sure that we uh, go over it next week. Okay. Sounds good. Thank awesome. you so much. Have a good one. Thanks, Raj. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.